How you been? Yeah, good, man. Yourself? Yeah, fuck. Keeping busy. Yeah, yeah. Man, I've heard, um, heard a lot about you from um, Ty. I, I, I want to I wanna learn more, man. Yeah, bro. <laughs> like, honestly, same. yeah. Yeah, so like I'm, I'm, I'm curious. Like, so apparently you recently started your own podcast. Yeah, December. Okay, it's still pretty fresh. Yeah, yeah. How are you finding it? Yeah, pretty good. It's like, because I'm naturally shy, so you know, getting out of my comfort zone, learning yeah, to course, yeah. communicate more with people. Mm mm. How's it? How, how, well, as it, well, I'm curious what brought you to do it. I mean, as a shy person, you see, shy people don't I host podcasts. Yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> just to jump out of my comfort zone, really. Just to grow really up, okay. Yeah. 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 Nice. Nice. I just, so felt like, went, I just felt like it was time to, you know, start growing and jump out of my shell a bit. Good stuff, man. Good stuff. Good stuff. What, um, did anything inspire you to do it? Like any, like, did, did, I mean, like, yeah, like, where the, like, like, um, there are many platforms, like why podcasts? Did you listen you know, to them yourself? Yeah, or? I, listen, I listen to them and, you know, people mm. I follow do them as well. So I was just like, you know, I'll give it a go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect, man. I love it. I love it. Okay, just like, so that was your intention, just to throw yourself out of your comfort zone. Yeah, I was like, fuck it, it's time. <laughs> That's awesome, man. That's fucking yeah. awesome. How old are you? Uh, 23. Yeah, you see, I mean, like, yeah, similar age, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How old are you? Nice. Uh, 20. 20, yeah. Yeah, I've heard a lot about you as well from Ty. Yeah, I hope all, hope all good. But <laughs> yeah, you, you know, we've actually met before, right? You were um, volunteering at the Richard Branson thing. Yeah, we. Yeah, we um, I, I went there with Ty, and you were on one of my vlogs that I did. <laughs> You're the, you gave me the wristband and everything. <laughs> I, I, I was on your vlog, man. Can you send yeah. me a link, <laughs> please? Yeah, yeah. please, please. I had no idea. <laughs> yeah, because was Ty, yeah. Ty mentioned you. I was like, "Fuck, I know this guy from somewhere." And I went back and looked at my vlog. I was like, fuck, that's the guy from my vlog. <laughs> oh, how freaking cool. I um, they t- t- didn't mention that. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, so, wow. Well. Small world, eh? <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> How'd you find the event? Yeah, it was not too bad. The, the Richard Branson part, you know, I thought I was going to get more out of that. Mm. Um, the lady interviewing him, I don't know. I felt like she was all about herself, really. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. I th- um, okay, yeah, yeah, I, um, I wish it was just him speaking. Yeah, that's what I, I mean. Like, like, I don't know why she was interviewing him. But oh, the, oh, the, the, the thing is, actually, Richard apparently is a very shy guy, apparently. Oh, okay. Apparently. Uh, I wouldn't know. Yeah. I, I don't know the guy, right, personally. So, but apparently that's what I've heard. So he's like a real shy guy. Like, that's why he, he's up there with like, someone interviewing him. It was interesting being part of the crew too. Um, yeah, have you gone to Tony Robbins? Uh, no, I've seen you've gone to that. How'd you find it, bro? It was unreal. I mean, like, like I may be I'm like I, I was already a big fan of him. Yeah, like, I, I, I love love what he does. And I went and saw um saw him live finally like, after two years of like really being into his stuff. And yeah, I got a lot out of it, man. And I was like, man, I, I want to crew for this next year. And someone mentioned to me, Matt, you should um. If you want a crew for that, why don't you crew for Richard Branson just to see what it's like? I'm like, yeah, I'll give it a shot. Yeah, and to be there just to serve and give people like a great experience was, was really kind of cool. Yeah, I, um, I, I remember you. You're very, um, very out there and very nice to everyone. I was like, oh. <laughs> I, I, I feel like for being the short, the shortest guy in the room, I have the <laughs> tallest voice sometimes. Yes, you do. <laughs> so you highly recommend Tony Robbins? Yeah, yeah, give it a yeah, yeah, absolutely, man. I yeah, mean, like, even just give it a shot. Like, I mean, I um, I was very fortunate. I got my ticket upgraded, like, and I, 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 was, I was sitting in like the good spot, man. And Fuck. um, yeah, I, I loved it. I loved it. I mean, yeah, I was planning on though. buying tickets for it, but I don't know if it's still going ahead this year or not. Oh yeah, see that that the, ah that very tough. I mean, I don't, I don't think it will be, man. It's seven thousand people in an arena. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I think it's unlikely which is a shame because yeah. yeah i was about to buy the tickets and then all this corona shit came about and uh, nah, mm. i'm not gonna risk it <laughs> yeah man it's 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 really sort of spanner in the works hey yeah. it's like all, all that stuff i had some iron maiden tickets i was so keen on going to 
Do you, know, do you know Iron Maiden? Uh, no. They're a metal band. It's like an like oh, okay. old school yeah. metal band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not like thrash. Like, did they just like um? <laughs> how I say it? Like they're on the more melodic side. <laughs> yeah. And um, because like, like I used to be a metalhead as a kid. I used yeah. to love love that stuff. Now now I'm really into EDM. But like my mate was like Matt. I made him to come to Sydney. I was like, oh yeah, okay. But they were cancelled, man. I was, I was like last week just crying in my room. <laughs> 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 I just did an online event. Um, do you heard a guy called Kern Ray? Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I just did one of his events. It was supposed to be in person, but they took it all online. It was a three-day How was event. it? Yeah, it was really good. I got a lot out of it, actually. Good stuff, man. And good stuff. the community stuff. there, because they have this Facebook community, and they're just, they're just full of all positive people striving for all the same goals. So, it's yeah, it's good. I like it. What was the um, course on? Um, so, it's on like uh, – so, it's called Nail It, Scale It. So it's about growing your company, um, yeah, advertising, marketing, sales, as well as mindset and mm. basically being a leader and all that. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's so, yeah, cool, man. That's it was cool. really interesting. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy for you, man. Yeah, nice for nice. Glad you got a lot out of it. I um, you've heard a lot about Kern, right? So I've seen yeah. him speak a couple of times. I like him because yeah, he's as well, so I can like really relate to him. Yeah, yeah, that does help. Hey. Yeah, I gotta say, yeah. Like we watch like Gary Vee and all that. Like they're Americans. Like sometimes it's hard to relate. Mm-hmm. Like, like, they all have good stuff, right? Yeah. But just like that, I feel that's like that. You, like another another level of like yeah, relatability that yeah just adds so much value. I think yeah 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 right. cool man. Like, I, I I'm I'm curious like with, with this um uh, podcast, is there any intention for the episode? Um, and also who's your, who's your audience as well? Um, anyone really. I just want to interview a huge range of people, just people on a, a journey for kind of success or people who've had setbacks and overcome them. I just want to uh, talk to people and know their story. Yeah, man. Absolutely. Yeah, I believe I everyone, everyone has a story, whether how big or small, so I just want to share it. Oh, perfect, man. I love that. I love that. For, awesome, you, for awesome, your awesome. one, I just, I just want to know your story, really. Yeah? Okay. yeah man. I've seen uh, little snippets and videos, but I wanted to dive in and find out, you know, your whole story. What was it about? What happened? Very interesting to me. <laughs> well, so, um, I'm, I'm glad. Hey, man, I just uh, I want to pre-frame, like, nothing's off limits. I yeah. answer literally anything. Yeah. I... um. Yeah, I'm a book man. I like yeah. I um I've had every question I I, I think imaginable. I think yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like in terms of my in terms of my story, like like from like speaking to like, like from from speaking to like conferences and like high school kids like, like as, as young as you you sevens, right? They got some yeah. pretty intri- <laughs> in, 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 intriguing like in questions, right? Like <laughs> yeah. And it's great. I love that because it's like, it's, it's like innocence that has no filter. It's like just, yeah, it's like I have some in mind. I, w- I want to know and they ask. It's like, it's perfect. Yeah. I mean, yeah, uh, we won't, won't go into it, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we'll start off. Take me back to the beginning. What was your upbringing like? My upbringing? Yeah, yeah. I mean, so when I was a kid, I was a pretty, how do I say, outgoing person. Yep. Somewhat, somewhat like, like I wasn't shy. Let's just say that I wasn't shy, but um, I was decently popular. Like, I, I, you're talking like primary school? Anyway, bro, primary, high school. Okay, primary school, I, I, I wasn't like heaps, heaps popular. I was like, yeah, yeah I, I, was, I was just I was, I was your average guy. I had no struggles, like I, I had no issues with my family or that stuff. I was never close to my parents. Yeah. Never were. We never had a good, a close relationship. Why do you think that? Then was? there was a distinction. Well, sorry, like, I, not not distinction is the wrong word. A hierarchy, in a way. Now yeah. the thing is that, I'm like, when I say this right, there needs to be some form of like distinction of parent versus child, but also a form of like relatability, right? I, um always felt distant from my parents. 
yeah. always, always did. And um, that carried through, right? Like when, when high school came, I was happy, right? I was sort of sick of primary school, wanted to go to big school, right? It was awesome. Loved it. And I made a lot of friends pretty quickly there. Like I found a way to make a lot of friends and I was, I was going well. Like I said, no family issues. But then I had these thoughts, and, right? I, I'm like, I've always been a curious person, tend to ask a lot of questions. I tend to sometimes go deep. And I was like, well, shit, what's, why, why am I here? Like, what's the meaning of my life? Which then led to me, well, if I was dead, would anything change? And lastly, was I a valuable part to society? And that bothered me, right, because I was 12 years old. I mean, I had no job. I did I lived at home with my parents. I didn't have a role in society, which meant for me, well, if I was actually gone and dead, I think he would really change. I just would be gone. Ultimately, what that meant for me was that I was worthless, that my life meant nothing. So what, what, what did I do? I equated all that with being worthless. And I then became depressed because of those questions. Now, it was when I became depressed that I really became aware of this one, one thing, right? That no one in my family really spoke about being upset, right? My dad, if he was, if he, if he, if he was upset, he would just keep to himself. He wouldn't say anything to anyone. No eye contact. Mom would do the same thing. Um, so I did, right? It was like, it's all I knew. Then, around my, then my mates would do the same thing. And it's like, it's just like some of the people don't talk about it. So I'm not going to talk about it. It's uncomfortable, yeah. right? Make myself vulnerable. So I kept to myself. Yeah. Anyways, I really went on a bit of a spill, uh, a ramble there. But that's, <laughs> that, that's how I came depressed, man, when I was, what, 12 years old. Yeah, man, oh, that that's was. really early, eh? Yeah, man. I was, um, <laughs> how I say, I, I, just, I just asked too many questions. I, I, I don't think it's a bad thing at all, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just got caught in a loop. So what led on from there? How, what was the next step in your depression? Next step? Well, then I, at the end of that year, I actually started experimenting with drugs. Yeah, what drugs? That's, um, pardon? What drugs? Oh, what, dr- what drugs? So it started with weed. Yep. Then eventually I found a guy who introduced me to Coke, and then I was dealing that. I mean, to, I mean, I mean <laughs> 13 years old, I mean... <laughs> how, do I, how do I afford it, right? <laughs> so, yeah, no other way. So that's what I did, man. And, um, yeah, I did that for a, a number of months. And um, then I, I – so in the midst of my drugs and all that, I, I met a girl at school, and she became my girlfriend, my first girlfriend. And it was kind of interesting, right? I, I, was, I, was, I was actually kind of, like, happy with her, right? And, and I, but I couldn't tell her how I was feeling. Right? I could not tell her that. I just keep house feeling and what I'm doing with, with drugs and all that completely separate to my relationship with her and all my friends and family, right? Because if I was to tell my girlfriend like how I was feeling, firstly, I I just – first, I couldn't because I wouldn't tell anyone else and it would kill me to know that I was burdening her. Yeah. I, fuck, I fucking hated it, man. And if I told her I was, you know, doing coke and dealing – she would leave me. She was yeah. so fucking innocent. She was so, so innocent, man. And so I um, didn't. But then about four months into our relationship, give or take, she um, found out that some of my friends at school had started smoking weed and that I was joining them. And so she, she confronted me right away. It was like, what are you doing? And basically gave me an ultimatum. It was her or the drugs because it was too toxic for her to have in her life. And so I lied to her. I said, I'll, I'll pick you. Like, I'll leave the drugs. When I say I lied to her, it took me three months to actually stop. Yeah. But I um, finally stopped the coke and um, then I felt lost, man. Yeah. I mean, that was, that was the next step. It was, just, it was just, yeah. I mean, the drugs came. Then without the coke, I, I, mean, I felt lost. So I picked up other habits. DJing, guitar, um, and the gym. Yeah, the gym was the for the biggest one for me. Yeah, I for my injury. Photos. You're a beast back there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. I was. I, I gotta say, like, I was. I was really committed. Really, really, really committed. The only. The, so when I look back at that photo, though, I, I do. I, 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 I assume you're talking about the photo of me that I, when I was topless, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, that, that was me. Um, actually, about a week or two before my injury, actually. But even when I look back at that photo, man, I see them like, like, on on the outside the shell. I mean, he's someone who looks hard. He looks like he's solid, yeah. he's aggressive. This type of, and that's what I wanted to do. Right, I wanted to put up a front that I was this guy who was confident. I was yeah. strong. I was no one was gonna Persona. fuck with me. Yeah, exactly right. I want to put on a mask for everyone, and I, I thought I did it pretty well. I mean, but you start peeling back the layers on that, and like you see someone who is just severely depressed. He's broken. He's scared. He's insecure, heavily yeah. insecure. Right. I got into the gym because. First, I was insecure, but my intentions for the gym was to be the biggest guy around, starting with my school. And yeah. I got there pretty quick. I became the biggest guy at my school. And I, I mean, like, people would just sort of feed it in a way. Like, they give me all, like, this, all these props for it. And I, I, I love the attention, right? I was a bit of an attention hole, and I still sort of am. <laughs> <laughs> but um, with... With that in mind, because I, I got into it with bad intent, I suppose like insecure intentions, yeah. it carried through. It was, and, and now I was comparing myself to everyone, right? So I was never happy. And no matter how big and how lean I got, I was always, always, always wanting more. Yeah, but did you touch steroids wanting more, at all? No, I never touched steroids. Yeah, I thought I, um, it would have I, been a drug you would have got into. No, I, 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 I so at if it, I felt like if you don't mind going into a little story, I actually never share the story, but I'm going to share it anyway. In the, it was year nine camp. We were at the beach and I took my top off in the water. And apparently, um, uh, one, of the, well, one of my mates came to me, right? And it was like, oh, Sir was talking shit about you. I'm like, what are you talking about? What have I, what have I done? He's like, oh, he's talking shit about your body. I'm like, what are you talking shit about? And he's, he's like, oh, well, look at you, man. Like, you're pretty big and like, you're ripped. He's saying you're on steroids. And when I heard that, I then, because I, 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 I hadn't touched steroids, right? And I was like, holy shit. So I went along with it. Because then other people were now asking me, Matt, are you on steroids? <laughs> and, then, no, and then, so then the year nine holidays came. It was, this was the period of time I was going to gain so much muscle. I wanted to yeah. come back as like a completely different person. And I did. And people kept asking me, Matt, are you on gear? Are you on gear? And it was like an ego thing now. Yeah. It was feeding my ego. And it really, um, Gave me this, how do I say this? False confidence, I suppose, right? Yeah, and it made you feel good, but really you weren't good. <laughs> it did. It did, yeah, absolutely, right? So uh, this just fed my ego and fed my insecurities further. It gave me more reason to push for my insecurities, right? I wasn't aware of that at the time, but that's what was going on. I could have told you enough. <laughs> insecure what the fuck are you talking about look at me like i'm building the best version of me is what i would tell you but yeah. no looking back on it i was not that yeah so um yeah so i never never, never touched gear for that reason because i i just didn't want um oh well, I, I just wanted to impress other people by that and i i, I would get them to believe i was on steroids like yeah. I, I would always say oh maybe i would never tell the truth right <laughs> but um but yeah I thought that was interesting, but um, <laughs> yeah. Um, anyways, the, I I I've, I haven't spoken that, spoken about that in a while, actually. <laughs> interesting, <laughs> thing, you, um, yeah. Interesting, you bring it up, man. Um, anyways, um, yeah. Anyway, so around the time I started getting the gym, though, man, I started skipping school. Yeah, I used to just walk out. I didn't want to be there, right? Like I, I said, I just want to disappear. Oh, I felt worthless. And I felt like I didn't, I didn't fit in, I felt like. And my e coordinator finds out pretty quick, though. She, um, she approached me. She's like, what are you doing with your attendance? And I, um, I, mean, I, just thought, I, I ended up just saying the truth. I was like, look, I, um, yeah, I've been skipping. And I, I, don't, I, I, I don't want to be here. Yeah. No, no, not only don't I like school, I don't feel anyone likes me. And I don't. And I want to disappear is what I told her. And then she, um, so my coordinator was someone who I thought was like intimidating, but she actually like let her guard down anyway. And she became more like open and wanted to listen. And she was actually concerned and she cared. Yeah. And I was like, wow. So I ended up just talking to her, talking to her. And that was, that was massive for me because then she was like, Matt, um, I want you to see the school counselor. Yeah, I didn't like talking, right? 
but um, <laughs> but I gave it a crack, and it was all right. I gave, got things off my chest, but I didn't like it. I didn't like it at the time. I didn't like talking at all. And so, anyways, to sum it up, but a year after, uh, well, about a year after, I was like, I'm not gonna tell. I'm not gonna tell anyone anymore. So, after a few months of seeing the counselor, I started lying to her. I started lying to my girlfriend and my friends as well. And I wasn't gonna tell anyone how I was feeling or thinking. This was all gonna be in here. I'm gonna deal with it, right? Because they're my problems. Why make the issue bigger than just in here? Mm-hmm. That's what I thought. Just kept it to myself. And then, yeah, January 9th, 2016 um, was the day that I, that I, um, it's a quarter. So I jumped. I um, yeah, had my injury. I, um, yeah, man. Like, what was the day this? like? It was dull, man. It was really dull. Like, I, I, I'm usually an early riser. Yeah. Like, back, th- back then, it was like 5, 5.30 in the morning. I'm up making my breakfast. But that morning, I wasn't up that early. It was quite late. And I was like, what are you doing? Way up. So, like, and then she's like, man, I want to, I want to train with you. You're going to come to the gym with me today? So I used to train with my mum pretty often. And I'm like, mum, forget it. I don't, I'm not going today. She's like, what do you mean, mate? You're going six days a week since you started. You haven't missed a day. What are you talking about? It's Saturday. Like, you got nothing on, right? I'm like, mum, forget it. I'm tired. So I sort of just pushed her away. And I didn't talk to anyone. I didn't really talk to anyone on that day. Helped my dad out with a few things around the house, but that was about it. Just played my guitar a lot. And that later that night, it was about 10.30. I realized everyone upstairs had their had had their lights off, and I'm like, oh, they're probably in bed. So just flick mine off, put my guitar down, stop making noise, and yeah, went to my bed, just listened to some quiet music, and was like, fuck, I'm I'm still here. And there's three questions, right? That earlier on. If I was, so what's the meaning of my life? If I was there, would anything change? My valuable parts of society, they were still there. And they were running very, very, very often since I first had them. Uh, But they were heavy to start off with. But now it was at a point where I can't even bring to words, honestly. And I was like, I've actually had it. I've actually had it. And I closed my laptop, pulled out my phone, trying to find someone on my contact list, anyone at all that I could, I suppose, Say my last goodbye to, and the only person on my my friend that I wanted to message was my ex girlfriend. So my girlfriend at the time, obviously, spent about half an hour writing that message to her, and it was yeah. I, I left my phone on my bed after. Didn't want anything stopping me. What was in that message? Nothing clear. Nothing clear. As in, like, just my thoughts. Yeah, I never told her what I was gonna do, but I made it ext- so extremely clear in a way too. As in, like the I, I was just sharing my thoughts, right? My thoughts were very upsetting thoughts, very depressive thoughts, and strongly hinting towards what I was going to do. Yeah. I can't remember the exact message. If I'm honest, man, it was a long, long, long message. I didn't. <laughs> I didn't even read it, but I was like, this, these are my thoughts. Brr, send, left my phone there. Yeah. Stuck out of my house. And yeah, man, I, um, now like something else I usually do, I like, used to do I, when I used to um, go into, when I used to stick out of my house, used to, I um, would sneak out of this window in my garage. I used to leave it a crack open just so I could get back in. Yeah. But man, I, I got to say that night, there was no thought of that. I just completely shut it like, did not want to come back in that house. And I, I, I wanted to give myself no other option because I, was, I saw no other way for myself other than this. Yeah. It was going to be better for me and better for the world if I wasn't here. So I gave myself no option. And I woke up to my local shopping center, man. And the, in this whole process, right, it's about a 15-minute walk up to this place, but there was no second thought. I was so, 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 so certain this was all I saw for myself. And then I, I got on that roof and I threw myself off. I was, yeah, man, I was, I just wanted to die, man. I just wanted Did to disappear. Did you have man. any thoughts of regret, like, as you are in the air, like, 
going down. Oh, man. No fault. I was so. I, I mean, I, I was so convinced this was better for everyone and better for myself. And this is the only, only, how I say it, good outcome, right? And I was so convinced of it. And I suppose, yeah, I mean, like, then two weeks later, I went from the hospital. Multiple, multiple injuries, like 35 injuries in total. Um, brain injury, spinal injury, spinal being the main one. That, that, that affected me, right? My brain injury, I'm very, very, very fortunate. It was not severe, man. <sighs> Boy. Um, yeah. But it, um, I freaked out when I woke up. Yeah, because you thought you were right? dead and then you're alive. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I there's, there was I, – I, at first, I, I literally thought, am I dead? Like, is yeah. this, like, whatever this is, like, I, I, and it blew my mind. The fact that I was still alive um, really aggravated me, right? All I wanted was one thing beforehand. I just wanted to end my life. The fact that I'd failed, how pathetic am I now, was all I would say to myself each and every day, over and over and over again, because I was, yeah, man, I was just so mm, enraged, right? I never hated myself more. And then I suppose I got into the um, spinal ward a month into hospital, man. And yeah, every, I mean, everyone there was a lot older than me. I was a baby. I was 16. Everyone in there was like middle-aged mostly. There's a couple of 20-year-olds. Up in, and there's a lady that was in her 90s. So I, I, I felt like the odd one out. But I mean, the common question everyone would ask each other was, what happened to you? Mm. Why are you here? What happened to you? Especially me, though, because I was so young. I was 16. Everyone wanted to know. You're so young. What are you doing here? What are you doing here? What are you doing here? What happened? What happened? Everyone wanted to know what happened. Even people that came to visit me and even people, the complete strangers in public. I didn't even know them. Always asking what happened, what happened, what happened. Why wouldn't you share? Yada, 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 yada. I, 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 I hated it, man. hated it. I was – look, the fact that I failed, I couldn't come to terms with that. The most – I mean – what I would say usually was I had an accident. Like, oh, what happened? The most I would say is I had a fall. Yeah. I could not, could not say anything else, man. I was so, so just, oh, uh, yeah. I, like I said, I hated myself right now. And I didn't want to embarrass myself even more. I, and then um, it was about a week before I left hospital. I was, there, I was with my mum. We went to Penrith, right? And I've got these two piercings on my eyebrow, these yep. two dermals. Yep. And I wanted them for months. And my mom finally said yes. And when she said yes, I was actually really happy. I got to say, I was actually, I was really excited for this day, right? Because <laughs> I, I loved piercings back then. Yep. And man, I was keen. And I got it done and I was happy, truly happy. I was like, was like yes, yes. And um, then on the train ride back to the hospital, right? Like halfway through the trip, this guy comes on. Now, this guy's a complete stranger. I haven't met him at all um, ever in my life. And before he even sits down, just, what did you do to yourself? Like, just explodes out of his mouth, right? And, and like, no, no, no holding back. And I swear, dude, it must have been a mixture of how abrupt he was and how happy I was that, in that moment. For the first time ever, I shared, oh, I attempted suicide. He gave me a funny look. It's like a disbelief. He said, well, it's pretty fucking stupid, wasn't it? <laughs> and he, it was really just abrupt. And I, yeah, man, that, that, that hit me like a ton of bricks. I was like, Jesus Christ. And just laughed so I giggled with him. But man, the next morning, I, 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 I woke up with a sense of energy that I hadn't had in as long as I could remember. Yeah. And this was so unknown to me, right? For the first time, I actually went and saw my social worker without waiting for her to chase me out because I, I, I would never go see her. Yeah. Never. And if I, and if I did, it was because I had to. But this time, I didn't have to. I didn't have an appointment. I went and saw her willingly, and I shared what had happened. That guy on the train, how it made me feel. And, of course, I showed off my piercings. <laughs> I was happy about them. And, um, yeah, she made me realize. I opened up to that guy on the train that, she got, not, not only did it get things off my chest, it made things a bit lighter for me because I wasn't, hot, I wasn't suppressing like this 
the reality. That baggy around. Mm, exactly right. Exactly, exactly right. And then she asked me, hey, Matt, just as an experiment, like what if you were to open up to the people close to you in life, could you potentially strengthen the relationship you already have with those people? I was like, wow. Oh. Yeah, I don't know about that. Because uh, like I said, I didn't like talking. Yeah. Right. But um, she made a good point. The guy on the train, how that made me feel. So I give it a crack. I started with Viv, my ex-girlfriend. I just, I started sharing with her how I was feeling at the time. And yeah, man, it went surprisingly well. I, I, I wasn't, I, I wasn't um, anticipating that. I thought it was going to be bad. She wasn't going to see me as a man. She wasn't going to love me as much. But as a matter of fact, she appreciated me more because I was, I was real with her. Not only that, but she loved me more. And she trusted me more because I was actually honest and authentic with her now. Yeah. And I'm thinking, wow, that was a lot in that. Wow. And so I started talking to my friends, some of them. Don't get me wrong, some of my friends like didn't want to deal with it. So they just, like, sort of just didn't really speak to me. Okay, yeah. fair enough. But I found out who my true friends were. Yeah, some exactly. people did really want to he- help, me, help me out and hear me out. And they valued me as much as I valued them. And I'm like, that's... I, I really held on to that. And I thought I'd never do it, but I spoke to my parents. And that was the most uncomfortable thing I'd, <laughs> I'd ever done. But talking to my parents was, was the biggest step for me, man. Yeah. And like I said... At the beginning, right, we never had a close relationship. Yeah. Never. But it was amazing after that. After I actually was open with them, our relationship just was on another level. Like, they were now more open with me as well. Yeah. I felt a, a sense of, I suppose, comfort, security, and safety with them because they I did want to be there for me. And because of that, our relationship grew so much stronger. So now I had a support network around me, right? It was great. And I, I, I felt accepted. Although, don't get me wrong, those three questions are still unanswered. Mm. Right? I still felt worthless. Yeah. And that was offered an opportunity at November, December, I can't remember exactly when. I had been home for a number of months and... My social worker, the same social worker from beforehand, asked me, hey, Matt, there's an opportunity for you if you're open to it, you know? I, um, it's called the party program here at Ron Shore. We, um, you would share your story to about 30 students or so at a time. They'd be the exact same age as you. And, hey, Matt, remember that guy on the train? Like, how that made you feel? Just think, Matt, what if you would help others help you? Yeah. I was like... I mean, I didn't like talking. I didn't like it. And, um, Especially in front of a group as well. <laughs> I'd never done that either. i never openly shared my story, but my heart told me, hey, Matt, why don't you take a step out of your comfort zone? Hey, Matt, what if you could help someone? How would that feel? And that was the biggest one. And I was like, okay, let's do it. You know, before I said no, I said yes. And I wanted to give it a crack. I remember my first time sharing, man. It was February 2017. Not, not good. <laughs> <laughs> not good at all. I mean, I, I, from, my, from my perspective, right, I was so shaky. I was so nervous. I mean, I didn't even know how to, like, go through my story. Like, the manager of the program was just asking me questions, and so I would just answer them. But then, um, as I was there shaking afterwards, the students came up to me, man. They... They shook my hand. They said, thank you for sharing. I, um, some said they got a lot from it and inspired them. Some even said they want to help their friends, man. And when I heard all that, man, I just had this massive flashback of my entire life. When I first became depressed, three, excuse me, those three questions being then getting to drugs, then my attempt to suicide, leave me with some challenges, right? That guy on the train, how that made me feel. But then that moment there where I shared for the first time, that some people said they in, it, it inspired them and they want to help their friends, that my dark past was now used to help in, empower someone. I was mind blown. It, it, it really like 
baffled me, right? I was like, whoa, 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 what is all this? And um, <laughs> man, I became grateful, yeah. right? <clears throat> Excuse me. Like the, like I actually became grateful for my life. And it was like, I, I want to do more of this is what, is what I said to myself. Because I, I remember going back to how I got back from Royal Marshall was I caught a bus and man, I was just in tears, just, I mean, I'm just complete gratitude, just thinking, holy shit, that was massive. And I want to do more. And sure enough, I get a call from my manager saying, Matt, that was incredible. Like we want you again next week, but not just at the party program. We want you to sp- um, share at the school in Colorado called Pitwater House. Wow. It's a parent student evening. And, and man, I gotta say, I, I was anticipating a similar group size. Uh, uh-uh. uh, there was about three hundred people in this hall. Oh, I was like, holy shit! Like, right, what, 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 what the what, what I signed up for? And beforehand, man, there was there were speakers with, um, what do you call it? PowerPoints with photos, with videos, even with handouts. And I was like, Jesus Christ! And then I, I, I had nothing but the mic. That's all I had, man. And I was so scared, but the same, the same thing happened, except this time um, people were now asking for advice as well. I was like, holy, holy, How did you holy, like, that? afterwards. Pardon? How did you reply to them when they were asking you for advice? I would just try to relate to my experience as much as I could and just give the best advice I could, man. I mean, yeah. I, mean I was so, it, it felt so surreal in that moment. And then I remember my dad asking me in the car like on the drive back, like, Matt, do you reckon you could do like, take this somewhere? And I was like, yeah, maybe. Right? And the more I did it, the more I loved it. Right? And I then eventually set myself some goals. I was like, I don't want to speak to 30 kids at a time. I want to speak to schools. I want to speak to conferences, at universities, at corporates, hell, anywhere I can. And so I just I just got out there. I put myself out there. And after a lot of rejections, of course. <laughs> I mean, who wants to have um, an 18-year-old kid talk about mental health and suicide in front of your students? What qualifies him, right? That's what I used to think. But then once I started doing it, man, I, my beliefs about myself yeah. were on another level. And I was now meeting my goals. Right, and I was living my purpose. I then formed the mission, which was to instruct, inspire, influence, and impact people's frame of mind for them to change their lives. I say that each and every day. It's something I hold close to my heart, man. It's literally what drives me so, so, so much. Yeah. And I, I became fulfilled. Now, those three questions had a different answer. I wasn't worthless anymore. I had a mission. I had a purpose. I made. I, I, I inspire others, right? And I'm not saying each and every person has to do this. This is just what I do, right? Everyone's, there's no measure of what your purpose is. It's whatever you love, whatever's fulfilling for you, go do it. Like, like it's, just, it's really just that. But um, man, 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 man. It got to the point where my depression, anxiety, suicidal thoughts was all irrelevant. Like I... I, I became empowered. That's yeah. when my fucking true disability was now healed and now irrelevant. Yes, I'm still in a wheelchair. Yes, I would like to walk one day. But would I go back and change what I'd done? Fuck no. God, no. Being back in that place, I know for a fact, I was so, so, so certain on ending my life that I would have found another way. And I guarantee I, I, guarantee I would not be here. Yeah. And... Man, I firmly believe I'm the best version of Matt that there will that there could have ever been, right? Like for tw- for twenty twenty year old Matt on tenth of May, twenty twenty, I'm the best version of me. I, I firmly believe that, and that's why I wouldn't change anything, man. I like now. So you believe you have to life. go through all that to be the person you are now? No, absolutely, regrets. no regrets, man, because. If I change anything of what I've done, of what I chose, of anything, I wouldn't be the same. I wouldn't be the same person. Now, that's not to say I want other people to do things I've done yeah. in the past. That's not. I'm saying that at all. I'm saying I had to 
do all that to go to, to get to the position I am now. Although in saying that, I want to use my past as an example for people to empower them. Yeah, you can show so, them the right way. Exactly right. I, w- I want people to use my past as an example of what maybe not to do or maybe how to go about things differently. Mm-hmm. And yeah. And I, I, it's not to say I don't have bad days because I'm not the press anymore. I still have bad days. Don't get Everyone me wrong, has man. Bad days. <laughs> That's it, man. That's it. And I, um, yeah, I just, I am, like I'm also man. I'm just grateful. I really am. Yeah, that's, Everything, that's amazing, yeah. man. It's um, don't get me wrong. Wasn't an easy journey. No, you, <laughs> you definitely took the the hard long way. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but um, man, like I, I'm I'm here now, man. And I, I gotta yeah. say, I, I even this like lockdown, right? I, I'm still doing what I love. Like literally in. Two hours, man. I've got a free webinar coming up. Yeah, I'm really up excited for it. Eh? Yeah, thanks, man. Yeah, I appreciate. It. I, hope so. I look forward to seeing you there, man. I um, I don't think the turnout will be as big as the as the first one, but I don't even care, man. Just the idea of just in empowering others with yeah, but not, not just my story. Like I share, I share my story the first webinar, but I'm not going to do it this time. This time it's going to be as I titled it, the perspective that changes everything. Yeah, it's going to be based around gratitude. I'm really excited for it, man. Yeah. I am. Um, it's going to be like it's only my second webinar, but I want to do more and more and more in the future. I'm going to do a lot more. I'm um, I'm loving them. So yeah, yeah. So how's the speaking gigs going? Is there any at the moment because of Corona or no? Well, they were cancelled, right? So I had um, I had things booked. I had a, a few flights booked as well, and everything all cancelled because obviously can't. Yeah. Uh, can't um meet in groups but um i i I spoke in a few the bookings that i had which i could just rescheduling and i actually i got reached out someone reached out to me uh, literally a week ago to speak at a conference up in newcastle so i'm really keen for that um yeah so it's like it's not people's priorities at the moment it's honestly it's it's honestly it's not my priority at the moment either I mean, as much as I love, love, love speaking, and I, I will do more of it in the future, it's not my focus because I um, obviously I can't really, it's hard to book things at the moment. So what I'm doing is I'm focusing on coaching as well. Yeah. So people, um, I, 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 I've got a few clients and I've, um, man, I've already seen some profound changes in them, like just do what we've been working on I mean, like I, I consider myself a coach on psychological well-being and, and psychological prosperity, yeah. uh, because eighty percent of everything we do is mindset, and our mindset and frame of mind determines the amount of action we take and how we carry ourselves day to day, which determines the results we get and what we or our outcome in life, essentially. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why I, I, I believe if it if it all starts here, that's where I, I, I want to work on. Yeah, I'm very interested in the brain and what it can do. Yeah, man. Man, have you looked into quantum physics, neuroscience, epigenetics? I was listening to a (laughs) podcast of Elon Musk this morning and the shit that he's coming up with. He's coming up with this thing called a Neuralink and you can put it in Mm -hmm. your... They attach it to your brain and it can heal you physically, mentally, make you like more smarter and shit. I was like, whoa, what the hell? Jeez. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, in, in five and ten years' time, you probably won't even have to talk to people. You can just like uh, read people's minds and shit. I was like, what the fuck? Jesus. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, he's crazy. <laughs> That's going to be interesting, man. Yeah, I'd love to see that. Which Was that the Joe Reagan one? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I've been listening to like a few like snippets of it. I'm just he's a very thing, yeah. awkward person, though. He is, he is, he is, eh? yeah. But yeah. Incredible brain though. Yeah. A good head on his shoulders, I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah, it amazed me when he said like this thing that he's creating, it can heal eyesight or loss of hearing or like limbs. Like if you're disabled, like you can walk again and shit like that. I was like, wow. Wow. Shit. That's, that's, that's massive stuff. Yeah, wow. <laughs> so what, Jeez, what's yeah, rehab yeah. like for you at the moment? Rehab, yeah. So 
I, I'm still I'm still doing it. I um, what's it called? Never really stopped rehab. I mean, when I came home, I wasn't consistent with it early on. I was like once a week if I did it, and now it's like on average five to six times a week. Yeah, it's it's going well. Um, I've, I've progressed to the point where I'm now doing sit stands with assistance, which is massive for me. Considering when I was in hospital, I was told, "Matt, you have a complete spinal cord injury. You will never get yeah. anything back." I, I don't believe right. what you say, bro. It's um, I mean, they have to tell you worst case scenarios. Yeah, exactly. I, I understand that, but where I think it could have been different is there being a more positive focus. Yeah. Right. And that's what my physio did when I was then home. So w- when I came home, that's what my physio did. Like the, um, the, um, her, 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 her name was Lee McQuaid. She was really, really profound. Like she had, um, like she found little, 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 little things and she worked with them. She was, she, like, it's like I gave her an inch and she took a mile. Man, she just, like she found little, little, like very tiny flickers in my hamstrings, my quads, mm-hmm. and we just worked on them. We just worked on it. I mean, it's progressed so much since then. I wish, I wish, really wish I um, spent more time with her when I, like when she was um, a physio. She's now retired. Um, okay. Yeah, she was amazing. I, um, but yeah, I, um, I, I, and I'm still progressing to this day. I mean, I'm four years post injury. Right? I was told all the, like, the the most gains you'll ever get is after a year. Once a year's up, you're not going to get anything back. After that, I was like, okay. And I um I refused to believe it deep down, and yeah. I kept at it. Yeah, yeah. but so anything's possible, man. You put man, it, you can achieve it. it it's it, it's it's. It's really powerful mind. It really is. And I, th- I think we all underestimate it. <laughs> we all do. Like, I, I, I mean, yeah, we probably only use like 5% of it, if that, no, no, right? It's crazy. Like, Imagine if we had access to the whole thing. We do. It's, it's literally <laughs> part of us, but we yeah. just don't. <laughs> we don't know how to access it. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. We just, um, how I say it, we, we, we just feel our minds bullshit. Or we choose yeah. to believe. Limiting yep. things, yeah, yeah, man. So you, yeah, but so um, goals to walk again one day. Absolutely, bro. I mean, my current, my, my first goal is to do a um, what's it called, a solo sit stand, like unassisted. Yep. I um, my first goal is just to do a sit stand in general. Like, I, right now, I'm actually in my standing frame as we speak. But um, so I've been doing sit stands in this thing, but it's not the same as doing it um, that like a strap around you and like being like locked in somewhere. Like, yes, when I do my sit stands, my physio, he sort of locks my knees and legs in place. So otherwise they will go everywhere. They do yeah. tend to do whatever they want, but I do have activation. So, um, so yeah, like I, I keep that goal. So now it's just unassisted and then to take my first step and then to get there to walk, man. I, I, I cannot wait for that. I know, I, I know it's going to come as well. You get there, so I'm uh, I'm just excited and waiting for that day to come. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but obviously, with that, I work towards it. I just wish and hope and sit here and <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I see you yeah. Like peeps early in training and do your rehab and shit. I was like, fuck. Yeah, man. I'm like, like I, I, I'm, I'm all about uh, a morning process, right? What time like, do you person, get up? I, I'm so I wake up at three thirty, so I um. I'm a firm believer personally of um, your morning routine will determine the rest of your day. So if you start the day by getting over yourself, so overcoming yourself, so like getting out of your comfort zone, like for me, like getting up at 3.30 is not the most comfortable thing, right? And if I can get up, I've already overcome myself, right? I've already gone over myself. I've, yeah. So it's just a massive thing already. Then I do my meditation and then typically I'll go um, do my workout. Right now, gyms are closed. So what I do again, the park down the road, they have some, uh, what's it called, uh, monkey bars there. I do pull-ups off that. 
<laughs> and that's literally all I do. I, I, and like, I, I go there, I, I, I take my bag. It has two dumbbells, like two four yeah. kilo dumbbells. I put it in my bag and I wear it as a vest and I do pull ups and I, I, that's my workout. And sometimes I'll do whatever I can with the four kilo dumbbells. And I literally believe there are no excuses for freaking anything. I mean, if it, like, what I, I, um, yeah, oh, actually, I'm going way off topic for talk about that. Anyways, um, yeah, so morning routine. So I um, do my workout, then I come back, bre- breakfast, bathroom, shower, cold shower too. So I, I go half hot, half cold. I, I, yeah. I, I start cold, go hot, and end on cold. I, um, yeah. yeah. I finish my shower. So anyways, that's my morning well. routine. Yeah, man, there's a, lot, there's a lot of power in cold yeah. showers. I really, really believe it. I um. I did a, I, so August um, 2018 to August September 2019 I did strictly just cold only cold showers and um, man that was um, that, that was that was interesting hey do you find I, 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 off yes yeah yes <laughs> yes <laughs> oh, <thank God. laughs> man man he's a game changer and I, I, what I love about him is that he was so like looked down upon at first yeah right like, he was not the guy people would go to for advice he looked like a crazy and, fucking lunatic <laughs> yeah at first right and then he was going to science like a I, 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 scientist like, like this is like, like look at what i can do and stuff and people slow in that case and then they started training other people to do it and now now science is looking into him he's actually changing the game i'm like that's that that's so inspirational. Someone who literally came from, like, well, not came from anything. He, I mean, like, what I'm trying to say is like, he was like looked down upon at first. Yeah. And now these guys look to him. Yeah, there's professional it's, athletes and all that doing his methods. Yeah, absolutely. Growing very quickly. Yeah, it, it's powerful stuff, man. It, it's really powerful stuff. I think um. Yeah, I'm all about what he does. And yeah, so I'm, um, yeah, man, I, I, love, I love that you're into him as well. It's yeah. so cool, man. So cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, because <laughs> I get up at 5.30 because I seen your Instagram. I was like, yeah. fuck, I need to start getting up earlier now because I was getting up at 6.30. I was like, shit, no, nah, I'm going to go an hour earlier now. But now you tell, oh, me, okay. three, now you tell me 3.30. <laughs> I'm like, oh, shit, all right, I've got to get up early. <laughs> <laughs> what time I mean, do you sleep? Oh, I mean that differs, man. Like um, that'll range between. I mean, some nights I'm out at eight o'clock. Yeah. Some nights I get to sleep at eleven thirty. It's really different. It's anywhere in between. Yeah, eight and usually eight and ten thirty. Anywhere in between that. Yeah, I feel like I need to get at least seven to eight hours sleep for me to be productive. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. But then again, I have I mean, to test to myself, so might have to wake yeah. up earlier. Don't get me wrong. Like, so like, when I say there's a range between like eight o'clock and eleven thirty, like most nights it's more around ten o'clock, ten thirty. But yeah. I then will get an eight hour sleep one night, and that'll like just just like you know, it's boost my energy up. Like, I'm, like when I say three thirty, like it's literally something like I've only adopted like three weeks ago. I um was doing four, I was doing four thirty before that. I was like, ah, oh, let, let, let's one up our game a little bit. And, um, yeah, I just, I, I do, um, fuck, where am I going with this? I, 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 I do wake up at like, like 4 30, 5 o'clock every now and then, right? It, that, that like once in a blue moon thing. Yeah, but, the other day when you got the shits at yourself because you missed your alarm or whatever. Yeah, yeah, man. Oh, man. <laughs> I actually, I actually really got the shits myself. I really did. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> Because it, it it's it's just about like for me like what the three thirty means to me is the fact that I overcome myself yeah and I and I didn't I, and I didn't give in to what um uh what what was comfortable like I literally seek discomfort like you know yes theory I love that, that like little yeah. phrase seek discomfort I um I think it's massive that I really really think I think it is and you become more disciplined as an individual as just a result of it. I'm not sure, like, how have you found the 5.30? 
I'm actually, hey, I'm, just... I'm, I'm enjoying it because I get up and I, I do an hour of work, like, because there's no one awake. So I can just be with myself, focus on what I need to do. Then I just go mm. for a walk and come home and have breakfast and then do whatever else I have to do. Yeah, man. That's awesome. That's awesome. I mean, it's like uh, I, the, the way I see it personally is like I put myself ahead of the pack, so to speak. Like I, I like I like it up earlier. And what do leaders do? Leaders do more. And so that's what I try to do. Um, yeah. That, I mean, yeah. So, I mean, like I've always been an early riser, right? Like before my injury, it was always like 5, 5.30. But now I've sort of just nudged it a little bit more. Yeah, it's been harder for me as well because I hate. I usually hate mornings. I'm like, you- See, I'm the... I'm, I'm the opposite. I'm a morning guy. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> I used to wake up, yeah, you know, 7.30 and just go straight to work. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Now I'm up fucking 5.30 getting shit done before work. So it's so taking good, some man. adjustment, but I feel very good now and I'm feeling the benefits from it. So it's worth it. Good stuff, man. Good stuff. I'm, man, I'm so happy to hear that. So, so happy to hear that. But might have to wake up at 3.30 tomorrow now. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, give it a go if you want. I mean, um, uh, like the um, the way I see it, man. Like when my morning routine's over, it's like six thirty, and the day has not even started. I'm like, perfect. Now I now I start kicking um, kicking ass on like what I got to get done, right? Like whether that be like like stuff for social media or like put together my webinar or whatever it may be, right? It's um. I can get started so much earlier. Yes. Yeah. I don't. I, I personally, that, that's the way I, I, I like. I like. I like it. And um. Yeah. And meditation is something that's really key for me in the morning. Yeah, I, I started to do meditation, but I couldn't really get into it. Maybe uh, I wasn't consistent with it. Well, the thing about meditation is that there's so many different forms of it. There's no one way about it. And with meditation, I'm mean, like my meditation is more of like a self-talk session. Right, like, like, I literally program like my, like, I program my brain in the morning that I'm unstoppable, that I'm fearless, that I'm powerful, and that I'm inspirational. Those four yeah. things I say over and over. I just, yeah. I just say them though. Like, if you just say them, they're just words. But once you feel them, like, feel them, like, and just mm-hmm. you carry yourself with that. That's that's when you start seeing the change right it, it's all about how it makes how you feel you need you, you really need to um feel it if you're gonna say it yeah like like that's why that's why i believe affirmations alone are no good you need to need to reach like, you need to attach emotion to it as well that's when you that, accept that's it. a word attach emotion yeah 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 there's so much power in it and our yeah, our morning routine is so key. Like, I mean, if you look at anyone successful, they always have a morning routine that they yeah. that they strictly um, adhere to. Yeah, that's what drove me to wake up early as well. I see all these successful yeah. people, and I was like, "Fuck! If I want to be like that, I've got to act like that." You, you, you man, check out Mark Wahlberg's morning routine. He gets up, he gets up so early. He, um, yeah, does two workouts in the morning, I believe, and. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah every, 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 I mean, like, just as an example, like, there's so many different ones, like out there, right? I mean, but yeah, it's so whatever works for you. I think, yeah, exactly. Just, just, just trial and error. Like, see what works, see what doesn't. I um, Hello, yeah. um, David Goggins. I uh, haven't watched much of his stuff, but I know of him. Yeah, I'm reading his book at the moment. Very interesting. Yeah, how is I it? I recommend it. He was an he was an ex Navy SEAL, wasn't he? And he's like he he's he's trying to. Well, like, um, portray himself as, as like the strongest minded person. Like, yeah, ever. he runs like ultra marathons and all that stuff now. He's crazy. Jeez, Jeez. yeah, that's, that's so good. That's so good. <laughs> yeah, uh, you should follow him. Read his book as well. Yeah, man, I'll, 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 I'll definitely. Excuse me, look into him a little bit more. I um, yeah, I see, I see stuff pop up every now and then. Yeah, he's not really big on social media. Mm. Like you go on his Instagram, he doesn't follow anyone, and he posts like once a week or something. All oh, right, wow. Yeah. He's like off I the mean, grid. The first um, the first time like I heard of him was um, a mate sent me the you know Tom P 
Bill you? I can't remember how it happened last yeah. name. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what's it called? Hip Hop Theory. It was on yeah. there. Yeah, I thought that was a freaking powerful thing, man. But yeah, I, 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 I don't know why. I just never really researched much about him. Hey, one person I'm into like, right now is Dan Pena. Okay, I haven't heard of him before. He's um, he's interesting, man. Like how he um, he approaches things. I, I think is very, very interesting. Um, yeah, he's um, intense. <laughs> like the, the the way he um talks. He's like seventy five years old, man, and he's like he 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 his life's like an adrenaline rush, a constant adrenaline rush. <laughs> <It's> yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Right. So, what you're doing now is that your full time gig? Or do you yeah, so what do you work I, as well? Well, no. So, what I do, um, so speak up, but speaking's on hold at the moment. Yeah. <clears throat> so, to I suppose compliment it, I'm doing the um, the webinars, like the, they're for free, but the um, coaching is also what I do. But then um, I also do Forex trading, I like trade currencies. Okay. Yeah. So, I've, I've had a big interest in that for about Three years now. I got started in 2017. I um, what's it called? Found out about share. Uh, like I found out about share trading. Like I knew I've known about it for years, but then I actually met someone who like, was into it and was successful. And, and I was like, yeah, I've been I've always been intrigued by it, but I never looked into it. So I started looking into it and attended a seminar, signed up for a course, and man, yeah, I love it. I still yeah. do it, yeah. I've been interested in shares, but <clears throat> it's a bit complicated. And I haven't taken the time to really understand it yet. Yeah, I I, I found the same with shares. So I got into Forex, a yeah. foreign exchange. And the way I trade is it's, it's it's technical trading instead of fundamental. Fundamental means, I suppose, you look at um, what moves the market, right? The, um, the news, the... Um, not just news, but politics, all that stuff. But then technical traders, they look at the chart. They literally just look at the chart. That determines whether they go long or short, buy or sell. They look at pipe patterns and the overall structure of the market. So that's, um, that, that's how I trade. Yeah. And yeah, I love it, man. Yeah, it's going good. So how's you and the missus? How long have you been with her for? Oh, my girlfriend, yeah. So it's been a year. Um, we actually recently moved out to... Um, apartment and um man it's it's cool it's going well we, we actually met uh, um mardi gras night last last year <laughs> out of the night out of the night it was, it was, that's how we met but then our first um first time we met up like actually had a real conversation like that that wasn't a conversation but um yeah we just i just we just connected really yeah. well really really well and yeah very very grateful for it don't be wrong like it's not like it's been like a constant uphill god no relationship. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's all over the freaking shop right but like it's been an uptrend so it's, it's been all over the place but it's been going up gradually right yeah. overall and it's it's been awesome man i'm very very grateful for it how do you balance a uh, relationship mm-hmm. as well as, you know, smashing your goals? That's a, that's a good question, man. I, I, it's like there almost isn't an answer to that. Right. I, I find it hard. <laughs> do you ever, do you ever miss yourself? Yeah. For four years. Oh, congrats, man. How's that going? How, how do you balance that with your goals? <laughs> I find it very hard. It is hard, eh? There's been a fair few arguments of um, me not giving enough time to her because, you know, I'm focused on all my other things that I do. So, yeah, it's very hard. Yeah, of course, of course. I, um, for me, what I like to do is I um, determine my values. So, um, do you know um, Dr. Martini? He has this um, value determination test on like, just online for free. And I like to do that test and then I like to see my values. And then I, I, like, to, I like to work my out as a percentage. Like, all right, what, what percentage of my time do I want to spend here, 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 here? And that's how I, I like to work out my time. Yeah. Or, I, or like, also, also what I've done with my girlfriend is I'll say, like, all right, um, after a certain time, I'm, 
I'm all yours, right? Like I, I, I this, that'll be our time, right? Like, <clears throat> or like Sundays, right? Like most, um, most of the time, like that, that's what we do. We have the odd, um, odd, odd occasion where it's like, okay, this Sunday you, you can, you can work on your stuff and all that, all that jazz. But yeah, it's, um, there's no real answer to it. It's really, yeah, it's really hard to answer it to it. But it's important to also not um, get deviated from your goals because it, 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 it can really happen. Excuse me. But also you, you need to be putting attention where, um, where it is important, obviously, in your life. Yeah. That's what saying. Yeah, I find it hard to balance. Mm. But I, 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 the the biggest thing I think is communication, relationship. Yeah. Just making things super, super clear with each other. That I, I, this is what's important to me. This is what I, I am going to do. Right. This is what it's what's fulfilling to me. It's what motivates me. It's what I'm driven to do. And yada yada yada. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like in the, the communication area as well. Something I'm trying to work on. But hey, the podcasts are helping you. They must be, yeah. surely. Yeah, they, they are. But sometimes I, I feel like I don't communicate enough with her. So it turns mm. out into a fight with because I'm not spending enough time. But that's because she doesn't know what I'm working on. and yeah. all comes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love, though, you're not putting the blame on her and you're looking within yourself yeah. because most people... I mean, it, it's almost like the human. It's like it's like natural in a way to do. I, I think just to fall victim to our circumstances. No, I like how you've taken ownership for what you've done. Yeah, and I don't think it's all your fault. I think it's um, so it's fault and praise on both on both sides, an equal amount. It's just always. I love how you're looking within and and asking yourself, what can I do differently? Yeah, that's powerful, man. I think that, yeah, ownership is so key. Yeah, exactly. But that, that, that comes back down to authenticity as well, right? But, yeah. Well, how long has this been going for? Nearly an hour and 20 minutes or something. That's been a good chat, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> I've enjoyed it. Fuck, we've got to catch up in person too once all this is Absolutely, done. man. Yeah, yeah. 100% of the time. Meet up, meet up with, 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 with Ty as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what I forgot to ask. How's that event going? You guys are planning. Yeah, man. So we're we're planning an event for young people. Um, we're thinking like just as a rough age um, guideline, fifteen to twenty-five. Yep. And yeah, I, I, I'm really excited for it, man. It's um, it's coming together. It's a uh, excuse me. Um, what's it called? It's. I mean, we we do need to still work on it, obviously. But the, um, it's I, I I would say okay, like we we both have a very aligned and almost a clear vision of what it's going to look like, and now start putting all the pieces together and all the the other logistics of like hosting an event, right? Like yeah, like the venues, dates, um, and all the other things in between that, man. Yeah, but that's what we're talking about. Yeah, yeah. So, but I've, um. It's exciting, man. Really, really keen for it. Yeah, I can't wait. I'm probably going to come to it. That'd be good, man. That'd be good. Yeah. That'd be awesome. We're, we're planning um, yeah, big things with this event. so, And we're hoping it to be like an ongoing thing as well. Yeah, it would be good. Because, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, our aim for the first event is to have 500 people. Yep. Which I think is a very reasonable goal if, if, if we push, if we really push for it. I think, yeah, we'll, we'll achieve that. And, um, yeah, it'll, it'll be good, man. So, so is can, there a theme for this event? Like The theme, uh, I mean, so I, 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 almost like the awakening in a way. Yep. Like we, we, we want to, um, like saying we want to empower people is very, 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 I suppose, broad and kind of general. E- everyone right? uses that. Yeah. So what I like... What what we do want to focus on, like one thing in, in particular, is like psychology, right? Like I said before, eighty percent of all that we do and 
our outcomes are by, are because of our psychology. It's so um, so key and to I suppose master your mind is I mean it 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 just is it's so it's so powerful and I I um I'm so I'm 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 so keen to, to get talking on it. I mean like I'm, I the webinars I'm doing are currently are based around that I, I, things to do with the mind, whether it be self awareness, whether it be um, changing your state, gratitude, morning routines, yeah. self talk, whatever it may be, right? I just um yeah, I think this is so key. And to have because, because I mean, the, the reason we want to focus on young people is we, we both ask ourselves, right? Like, <laughs> what if we were fifteen years old and we had this event? We were at this event. How the fuck would we turn out? <laughs> right? Like, it's massive. It's like yeah. I don't know this shit when I was younger. This has been so key. And man, like, um, it's funny. Like, I, 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 I when I was eighteen, nineteen, like, I'm not. It's not, it's not like I'm much older, but like, um. <laughs> I go to these personal development courses and people be like, you're so young, you're so young and all this stuff. And I'm like, I don't feel it at all. <laughs> but it's like, I, I would always ask myself, like, if I was younger, what could I have done with this? What could I have done with this? But other people would tell me the exact same thing. I'm like, yeah, wow. So what if we brought this to younger people Yeah. and made it specific for them? So that's, that's our thinking, and then we're, we are really both really excited for it. We can't wait. Yeah, I reckon you. It's going to be it's going to be good, man. I can't wait for it. Thank you, man. Thank you, man. I, I, I we appreciate your support, bro. We really do. I um, yeah. Ty and I are really excited for it. Yeah. So, where do you see yourself in ten years' time? What's your your big mission and goals? Yeah, man. I mean, so. I, I see myself like I post my own like personal development like course sort of thing. Like I um yeah, I suppose still speaking. Now in ten years, excuse me, will I still be speaking at schools? Ooh, mm, I don't know. Like right, I think I'll then be at an age where maybe I'm irrelevant to teens. Right? Yeah, well, not not so much irrelevant, but it's like I've um right now I'm at the prime age, right, twenty years old. Yeah, I'm I can the resonate with you a bit more exactly. Exactly right. It's I, I'm, I'm, I'm at the age where they will resonate with me. They will just relate so easily, especially to my story, right? Like, and then it makes it easier to um, run workshops and all this stuff with teenagers. But definitely in the future, more corporate, more corporate world things, like yeah. and gigs. But uh, how do I say this? I would, um, in 10 years' time, also send myself home. Life. Um, like, obviously, with um, my partner, I suppose having a first kid. I actually want a first kid a lot earlier than most people. I want it between 24 and 26. Yep. The reason I believe that is um, our bodies are physically the best, the best shape they will ever be for the rest of our lives. So, like, I think like that'd be the most ideal age. Just my thoughts alone. Um, obviously considering you're able to take care of that kid. <laughs> That's a given. But um, yeah, j- j- just my thoughts on that. Um, yeah, uh, there's a lot of areas of life, man, but I suppose with that, yeah, I suppose hosting my own regular like personal development workshops for people that like um, – I suppose that, that are adults, not just teens. Maybe, and I, I see myself doing a teens one as well because I do feel passionate about young people. Yeah. Because if you can, if you can empower young people, you're setting them up so far ahead <clears throat> for the future. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculously good. And um, yeah, man, I, I, I see my I see my trading being on a whole another level. I, 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 mean, like, I, I won't be trading very much, but it'll be very consistent and very yeah. profitable is what I say it. I see myself. Yeah. Sorry. I, yeah. I'm really rambling on this question. Uh, <laughs> yeah. A bit of a personal, you, you said you wanted kids. Are you able to do that naturally or? Yeah. So I will, I will, well, I'm actually insane that. So, um, 
I'm just going to get into it, man. Hope you don't mind. Um, That's all right. So, being 16 years old, having a spinal cord injury. So, if, if you don't know what spinal cord injuries in, um, in in general, think of your spine, uh, spinal cord as a highway of of, yeah. of um of, of the nerve signals being sent from your body to your brain and vice versa. Yeah. And wherever it gets damaged, means below that you should have no function, no sensation, no nothing. Right. At 16 years old, being told I'll get nothing back and getting my first erection was the best day of my life, I thought, <laughs> at the time, bro. <laughs> right? I was, I was ecstatic, man. And, <laughs> um, uh, 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 and um, yeah, then eventually I was able to ejaculate again, which yeah. is awesome. And although I, um, one thing I um, we need to get checked up on, though, is if I am still sterile. Yeah. Yeah. So... But um, considering that I am, yes, I can still have babies. Well, that's Kids. good, man. That's yeah, every I'm, male I'm wants very, that to happen. <laughs> yeah, man, man, I'm very, I'm very blessed, man. I, I fucking really am. Right. So, last question: What advice yeah. would you give to someone going through depression? What advice? Yeah, I, I don't like I that, that, that that is a massive question because. Depression, like the intensity, can yeah. really vary, right? So everyone's at a different stage. But I think as a, a, a blanket rule, a golden rule for everyone, is to firstly look at who you're surrounding yourself with. Yeah. Really look at who you're surrounding yourself with. Because, I mean, there's a saying, right, show me your friends and I'll show you your future, right? And it's, it's, it's so true. Our, the people we surround ourselves with, they influence and change how we think, feel, and act. Yeah. Whether we like to think that or not. It is the case, and I um I wasn't around the right people when I was younger, and I made some decisions that I suppose like in terms of like drugs, in terms of um um yeah the dealing and all that stuff, and um yeah I I I, I made some wrong decisions, but then I, I had a look at it, then I changed who. I, I changed who I was around myself with because the, how I wanted to feel more wasn't aligned with how I, these people were making me feel. Yeah. Right? So really taking that into account, how do I feel with people that I am around and how do I want to feel more? And that usually is a good gauge of like who you should be surrounding yourself with. Then um, next is human connection. So authenticity. And it's so commonly said, but speaking up, is so powerful. Mm-hmm. Authenticity is is massive because I believe that's where human connections like like really thrives. Is, is when authenticity is there, right? I believe it starts with presence and dies with authenticity. And authenticity will bring you closer to someone. And to have someone close to you means you have someone who values you. Yeah. Someone who values you is going to support you. You have a support network around you. That is fucking key. Um. That is probably the most general advice I'll give. Like we live in a very lucky country where there are support services out there very, very readily available in Australia, right? Uh, I mean, you hear about it a lot too. It's very, it's very much promoted in Australia, which is awesome. Um, yeah, but I would always look within and not seek external, so something external from you to fix you. I, 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 the, the way I, I coach people so is, is, is to go within and I, and I guide them through that and I really help them break through of whatever's holding them back because it's yeah. different for everyone else. On, on the back of that, why do you think depressions are increased? Because when I was a kid, it wasn't really heard of and now it's mm, out yeah. there a lot. Yeah, same with me, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm not much younger than you, but um, yeah, yeah. When I was younger, man, this wasn't a thing, right? You never really heard about it. I think now it's good that there's awareness around mental health, but I think there's the wrong focus. Yeah, Pers- personally, like when you say the word mental health, like what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Ninety-nine percent of people are going to say, "Oh, depression, anxiety." Um, it's usually negative words. Yeah. Right, and it's that already says mental health has a bad stigma to it. It says it's um that's where the focus is, right? The the 
the more upsetting things and the dimming statistics as well. Yeah. It's like, well, what if we put a more positive spin on it, right? Like, yes, we are creating awareness around mental health, but we're, we're promoting and putting our energy towards empowerment, right? We're addressing key issues, but focusing on empowerment. It's yeah. like giving feedback, right? If you ever heard the term of this shit sandwich? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like, um, so butter someone up, give them the heart, give them the critical advice and then, you know, um, compliment them on the way out. It's like, this is where I sort of envision, envision it, right? Sort of, right? It's, it's like, it's, it's like when I, I'm, I'm, I'm at a school, I'm at, or wherever I'm, I'm speaking at, right? I do give attention to the, the dark side of things, right? And like how I share my story with you already, I, I did address how I was feeling earlier. I'm like it wasn't great, and that yeah, there's a dark side to all this, but then there's also an empowering side to it, and I think that's where we don't focus enough on, because it's so. I mean, like it's I, very I, I, negative, I, and looked down upon. Exactly right, and I'm a firm belief, man. Where Attention goes, energy flows, and where energy flows is ultimately what will manifest. Yeah. So with that in mind, if we're putting all our attention and energy on doing statistics on negativity, we are not helping the situation at all because we're only going to manifest negativity. But if we put our energy and attention directed elsewhere towards maybe more empowering stuff, what will manifest is more We'll have more empowering outcomes, I believe. Yeah, and that's um, that's something I'm really trying to push. Like a, a common belief in mental health is that recovery is not possible. Bullshit! I I, I actually I, it actually drills me, man, and I, yeah. I, I I I get so worked up by this because like I'll go to these conferences, man. I'll speak, and there are so many people there, like like speakers, right, who will say. Look, we all know depression is not something that's um, curable. We know it's a lifelong illness, yada, yada, yada. <laughs> and, man, I, man, I sit in, in the audience and I, I feel this fire inside me. And then I go up there and I, and I say the exact opposite. And I, I say, no, I'm here, I stand here on stage to tell you that it is possible, that recovery is possible. I was someone who was at that place of rock bottom where I, I physically threw myself off a building because I was – intending to end my life. Yeah. I just saw no way forward, but now I am empowered. I'm no longer depressed, anxious, and suicidal. I live a fulfilled life instead. That's very different to recovery being impossible. Depression is a lifelong illness. It's very different. And it is possible. It's just people aren't putting the right attention out there, I, I, I think. Is it intentional? I don't think it's intentional. I just think people need to be educated. And yeah, maybe their like an um, education, perspe- that's what it is. Yeah, and people's perspectives need to be widened as well. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's just what I think. But I, it's just, it really fires me up, man. I, I, get, I get really like heat over this and I can, <laughs> I can go on a rant, but I won't. <laughs> Do you also feel it's uh, depression's thrown around a lot? Like kids are saying, oh, I'm depressed when they've just had a bad day. It's like mm. to get attention. Being depressed, so so, being in a depressed state is very different to having depression. Yeah, right. You can be upset over something. You can mourn a loss of someone close to you. Of course, you're gonna be upset by that. But depression is very different. Yeah, depression is very different. Yeah, and it, it is something that is thrown around quite a lot. Yeah, that's, it's that's um what I don't like you know. People are saying, oh, I'm depressed. You just had a bad day. Everyone goes through that. Why, why are you saying that? Yeah, you're upset. You've had, yeah, you've yeah. had a bad day. That, that's okay. There's nothing wrong with having a bad day. You're, you're, how I say it, you don't have a mental illness. Yeah. Because yeah of that, it. That's basically taking the piss out of someone that actually does have a mental illness. Exactly right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah. It's, they don't take it. Words of... Yeah, that's me. Seriously, yeah, nah. Words are powerful, man. And I think there needs to be more focus on it. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. Well, 
Good chat, man. Thank yeah. you for giving me your time, eh? Really appreciate it. My, 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 my pleasure, man. Thank you for being so um, flexible. I, I, I can just like have to change the day twice. I can't right. <laughs> all good, man. Yeah. No, I, pr- I really appreciate you, man. I um, yeah, I've um, I, I love that. I, I'm, I'm sure we have a lot of conversations to have in the future as well. Yeah, it'd be good. Look forward to catching up, man. Yeah, for any of my listeners, uh, where can they find you? Um, yeah, I have a website. Well, I suppose I feel first. So I, I have a website, www.mattcaruana.com. So M A T C A R U A N A dot com. So then I have my Instagram, which is Matt Shares, M A T Shares, no space. And my Facebook, um, just Matthew Caruana. Yeah. Yep, so that's where you can find me. Cheers. Thanks, thanks man. I appreciate thanks you, bro. Man. Uh, Appreciate you, man. See ya. See ya.